Hey up! I'm currently sat on the beach in Brighton on a very, very, very crisp morning. Now, what I love about this beach is it's where my favourite film was shot, which is Quadrophenia. Now, not only do I love the film, but I actually have a few personal ties to it. So, my great uncle was a film editor in the 60s and 70s, and he actually edited the film. How cool is that? Shout out to Mike Taylor, because it's not every day you get to say that your favourite film was edited by somebody in your family. So, unless that you've got a film editor in your family, then you can say that. But I'm not here to talk about quadrophenia, which I probably could do for a good while. I'm actually here because Brighton is such a hub for sustainable fashion and vintage clothing, which is actually the reason why I'm here today. So I'm gonna be going to chat to Joanne Godden, who is the founder and designer of Ruby Moon. So I'm gonna to chat to her a little bit about how she makes her products, which is all very innovative. And I will leave this beach eventually. Um, but at the moment, I'm currently quite enjoying watching the waves come in. If I could do this every morning, I would. But I don't live here, so I can't. Yeah. Join with Joanne Godden, who is the founder and designer of Ruby Moon. How are you? Nice to meet you, Louise. Good, yeah, Thanks for coming too. to visit us yeah. in our little studio. It's lovely as well. It's so bright in here, which must be really nice for creativity as well. To have a, have a yeah, bright it's space. great to come here in the morning on a yes. drab morning. That's it, and be like light. <laughs> <laughs> You're the world's first not for profit active wear brand, aren't you? We're the only one as <laughs> the well. Only as one. well. I, I've been looking for others, but so far we haven't found any. Because you've worked in the fashion industry for a long time, yeah. haven't you? So you must have seen some sites kind of working in there and working yeah. in sustainable bits as well. You do see some sites, but quite frankly, you kind of, if you work for a big corporate particularly, you start to believe all that you're fed in terms of compliance and auditing of factories and mills. And actually one of the things I read um, that Lucy Siegel wrote about um, was one of the mills that I had thought was, you know, it's a big mill, it's clean, it's meant to be one of the best meals in the world, and yet they were putting all of their dye stuffs into the local water supply. Oh gosh. Where people were drinking and bathing in that water. And I thought that they were, you know, a legitimate company. So. Yeah, that's horrendous. Yeah. What I love it, what you guys do, you empower women entrepreneurs in developing countries, yeah. which is incredible. Yeah. So how does that work and how do the profits kind of work with that? So. Every time if somebody makes a purchase from us, um, we make a loan to a woman um, in one of 14 developing countries, and that's do, done through a London-based uh, charity called Lend With Care, and anyone can make those loans, so do go on their website and have a look, um, because for as little as £15 you can make a loan to a woman, and it helps her either start up her business or grow her business. I think that's what's amazing about this brand, there's so much empowerment in there, and especially for women, and that's exactly what we need at the moment. I think that's fantastic. So this is the nets that um, our products originally come from. Wow. So, um, or the, actually sometimes the nets are even thicker than this, so they're the big, the big sort of um, trawler nets yeah. that come out of the you know, the Mediterranean and the North Sea. Fantastic. And then this is our, one of our end products. So as Love you can see, this is a rash guard. But if you feel it, it's really very Ooh, soft. Oh, that is very soft. Oh, yeah. That's lovely, that. Yeah. Um, and it's actually certified to be twice as resistant to sunlight, chlorine, wow. uh, salt water. So it's actually stronger than a normal nylon. I mean, micro. you can feel how strong it is. and. Yeah, that's amazing. And I love the design as well. I think this is funky. I love that. Yes. So this um, print is an amazing print by an amazing designer who's also local to Brighton. Fantastic. Called Sarah Arnett, and she donates all the prints to us. So we're really, really. I mean, she's an amazing decorative artist. So how did the design start? How do you kind of think about what you want to go to next? Um, I think. The print itself is the most inspirational thing for us. Yeah. I mean, obviously we make swimwear, so we have to think about um, what people want to swim in. Yeah. But the colours we take from the prints themselves. So, yeah, and I love yeah. the bright blue, the band as well at the yeah. top. I think that's really cool. And I've noticed it's kind of a theme throughout your swimwear as well with the... Yes, the blue. The, yes. 
Ocean blue. That's ocean <laughs> blue. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> But basically, because it's made from a problem, because ghost fishing nets are still scooping up all the yeah. marine life and killing it, um, it's sort of solving a problem. Yeah. So. so how do you source that? How do you how do you get? Because they're quite expensive nets, aren't they? When they if they lose yes. them, that's a lot of money gone into the sea. Yes, <laughs> they're worth about thirty thousand pounds per net. Wow. Because they're made obviously they're a strong nylon net. Yeah. Fishermen don't want to lose them, but it's just a natural thing that happens when yeah. you're out fishing. Um, but they just keep fishing when they're drifting, um, which is really bad for the environment. Um, but we're part of a pan-European project which takes those nets out of the ocean um, in three or four places across Europe. And those nets are retrieved by fishermen's groups or diving groups, and then they're taken to be washed and processed because you can imagine they're pretty dirty and mm, so they're washed processed broken down back into the nylon six which is the pure nylon and then that nylon is respun back into a fiber and sent down to italy where we dye and print our fabric that's incredible that's such a cool process it's so it's so nice though because that's how it should be it should be a longer process shouldn't it to make it more sustainable and it's nice that you can go running in your your stuff but then also go swimming in it yes so it's great for triathlons it's brilliant yes <laughs> it's yes we've got a gym to swim we call it gym to swim because yeah. you can use it for all sorts of exercise water sports or swimming yeah so. which is perfect i mean what was the first item you ever designed can you remember what the first one was for ruby moon um, oh gosh, it was a one-piece swimsuit. <gasps> Fantastic. Mm. Who did it go? Was that what kind of launched everything? Did yes, it go we started only with actually with one only one-piece swimsuits, but then we've now incorporated the leggings, the sports bras, the crop tops, so that you can do all sorts of things as well as swimming. Yeah, and I think it's nice as well that you put on cool events. I had a look at the Mindful Swim event that you put on a couple of months ago. Mm. How did that go down? Did it, did it happen? Yes, it was really fun, actually. Um, we had someone come along um, who's amazing, Dawn. She gave us um, techniques about how to breathe and, um, you know, just be more mindful. Um, we've had two sessions, actually. Um, one was more about breathing and the second one was about, more about mindfulness. But we have them on the beach and at the end everyone goes swimming because that's really nice. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's really nice. And it, was, it, was it cold though? It must have been quite a chilly uh, little swim. It was during the summer. <laughs> okay, so that's yeah. all right. <laughs> They're on hold till next spring now. Oh but, yeah, that's yeah. it, I was going to say. So what's the future for Ruby Moon? What are you looking at to kind of go forward with? Um, so we're working on some, some sustainable sunglasses made <gasps> from uh, local plastics, Ooh. waste plastics. That's going to be a, it's a long, go, on, long ongoing process. It's going to be a couple of years, I think, before we actually get into production with those. Yeah. Um, because we want to make sure everything's done really properly, circular economy, you know, so that they can be recycled in themselves as yes. well. It's really key. Yeah. Um, and we're also look, looking at flip-flops and other um, products to go along, some accessory, accessories to go along with our gym to swim. Fantastic. Well, that all ties in so nicely with everything as well. And well, Joe, best of luck for the rest of the year as well. Thank and you. And next year, it's all exciting how we're going. I'm looking forward to following it. It's going to Thank be good. you.